Okay, cool. So hi everyone, my name is Caitlin. I am with the park and I am also the park pre-nursing advisor. And this is gonna be my first workshop for the semester where we talk about how to get into sex aids nursing program. All right, let's get started. So a little bit of an overview of how this workshop is gonna go. Um, I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna introduce myself and um, just a little bit about this presentation. And then we're gonna get into the presentation and talk about um, what aspects are needed and what courses you need to take and all the nitty gritty logistics of applying to Sex States program. Um, at the end of the um, presentation, I'm also gonna be having a few pre-nursing students, a few of my classmates to talk about how their um, pre-nursing journey went, how their, how, what tips they recommend in order to, in order to get in. And you, you, it offers a lot of good perspective of different kinds of students and how getting into the program worked for them. And then at the end, um, you guys can ask any questions you may have. You guys are also welcome to just unmute and just ask if you guys have any questions too. So just, or you can type it in the chat. Um, I have Sam looking at the chat so she can just let me know if you guys have any questions. All right, let's get started. Okay. All right, so a little bit about me. Um, like I said, my name is Caitlin. I am a third semester nursing student here at Sac State. Um, I also went to Sac State for my prerequisites. So I've been here since fall 2019. Um, I took all my prereqs here for the most part. Um, aside for like some classes I took at a community college back home. Um, in addition to being the pre-nursing advisor, I'm also a tutor. I tutor in Bio 25. 526 and also Chem 6A. So a lot of the um, tough uh, pre-nursing prerequisites. So if you guys need any tutoring help, I work from 12 to four on Mondays and Wednesdays and you can typically find me in the global lounge or in the park um, office in the library on the fourth floor. All right, okay, let's get started. So a brief overview how our program works. So we, the School of Nursing, I'm gonna say we, but the School of Nursing does picks their candidates based on a rank order. So all of your, all of the components of your nursing application are be converted into points. And once the, um, the application process closes, the School of Nursing will take the top 80 candidates based off of um, the, like the top with the highest number of points and they'll take the top 80. And then they'll take some below that as your, um, al your alternates or your waiting list. Um, uh, applicants. So in terms of the application, we have a max of 88 points. That's assuming you get everything that can possibly you can possibly get, you'll get 88. And then, but you need 60 to be eligible to apply for Sac State. Even if you have met all the requ other requirements, if you don't meet the 60 point requirement, you will not be able to apply. So this is how our, um, our points are broken up. So it's broken up between the T's. That's going to be an exam that you need to take in order to uh, apply for Sac State. Um, you can get up to 30 points. On average, our students usually score um, 22 points out of the 30. Um, there's your ad adjusted nursing GPA, which is basically your GPA of the nursing prerequisites. Um, typically, our accepted nursing students usually get 40, so that would be a, a 4.0. Um, although it's not necessary, I do know people who have gotten in without the 4.0, so um, and then there's also the optional criteria. So these are things that you can get um, to do additional, to add additional boost points um, to your application. A lot of people tend to do, take advantage of this when they don't have the 4.0. So don't be discouraged if you don't have a 4.0, you can make up for it in your optional criteria. All right. Um, so this is just basically a charted version of everything that I just said. Um, so these are the, uh, minimum uh, GPA requirements to apply. So you need a 3.0, a 3.3, and a 3.3 for the respective science nursing and then uh, adjusted nursing. You also need um, a 75 minimum on the T's to apply for Sac State. We typically, uh, on average, the students will um, score around the 92. Um, and then also the optional criteria, again, optional, and then all of those should add up to at least 60 points. Um, and then these are just the maximums of what you could potentially get out of, in those categories. All right, so prerequisite courses, there will be seven, oh, wait, hold on. yeah, there should be, okay, there should be eight, the number is a little bit messed up, but there should be eight. 
Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna talk about, you're gonna have to take an oral communication. So that's some sort of public speaking, um, any course in your um, GE Aereo A1 um, courses will um, satisfy this uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. Then you have your written communication. So that's any Englishes, English 10, 10, um, 10 5, or 20. Mm -hmm. Any um, English course, uh, English writing course should fulfill that. Um, and then you have your critical thinking um, that can be fulfilled in your A3 GE requirements. And then you have to take a statistics course, um, a chemistry course. For chemistry, you can't really pick from like a large uh, selection choice like your uh, the previous four. Um, for chemistry, you have to take either Chem 6A or Chem 1A um, in order to satisfy the chemistry requirement. And um, for, for Sac State specifically, you need to take Bio 25 and Bio 26. Should you choose to take courses outside in another school, as long as they fulfilled the anatomy and physiology requirement, then that also qualifies as well. And then um, your last course is going to be microbiology, which is going to be uh, Bio 39 or Bio 139 um, here at Sac State. But um, just to let you guys know ahead of time for bio 39, you're going to need to take bio 10 as a prerequisite. Um, and you can also take a mic another microbiology course at another college, should you guys choose to do so. All right, so these are co-requisite courses. So these courses are not required for you to complete before you apply, but they are strongly recommended because you will have to finish them before you graduate anyway. So it's better to get them out of the way. Um, they don't, uh, so like I mentioned, uh, lifespan develop, human development, uh, introductory psychology and nutrition must be completed before your second semester of the nursing program should everyone get in. And then the sociocultural patterns must be completed prior to graduation. So um, for uh, psychology, you can take any of those three courses, psych uh, one, two, and five. Um, for lifespan development, you would take um, CHAD 30, and then these are a, a few examples of sociocultural patterns that you can take. SOC 1, Anthropology 2, Ethics 11, Anthropology 101, Anthropology 186, Ethnics 100, and I don't know what HRS but is, but HRS 161. And then for nutrition, um, you can take um, nutrition 10 here at Sac State, but again, you don't have to take all these at Sac State. You can take them at other um, colleges, community colleges, should you choose to do so, as long as they fulfill um, the content requirement. All right. All right, so now we're going to talk about the different GPAs that go into um, your application. So first we have your science GPA. So for your science GPA, so at the what makes up your science GPA is your anatomy, and physiology, so that'd be A and P one, A and P two, chemistry and microbiology. You need a minimum of three point to apply for this program, and this your GPA must make must be made up of three grades. Um, for when you apply, one of these courses, one of these four courses, could be in progress when you apply. Um, a lot of people have done is that they have their microbiology course be in progress when they apply. Um, and only one of these courses can be repeated. And um, just to preface, um, when you apply into the Saxe nursing program, plus and minuses don't matter. So if you get a B minus or a B plus, it'll be counted as a B. Um, but you will need a C minus or better or a C or a C minus or better to um, qualify to apply. All right. All right, um, this is your nursing GPA. So this is more focused, um, your GPA includes um, the additional other um, prerequisites, not aside from your science ones. And it also can include the four co-requisites as well. So again, you need a minimum of 3.3 .3 this time to be, up, um, to be applicable to apply. Um, so just to lay it out again, your science courses are anatomy and physiology or AMP one and two, chemistry and microbiology. And this time, only three of the 12 prerequisite slash co-requisite courses can be repeated, but only one of those three repeats can be a science course. Right. Um, so in terms of repeating, if you repeat a course, that's going to be your first attempt. It's not considered a repeat. Um, so for your non your in progress, um, one, like I mentioned a little bit before, one science course can be in progress, but also one non-science prerequisite can be um, 
and in progress. There is no limit to um, the number of in progress courses, uh, co-requisite courses you can have. Like I said, they're not required for you to apply, but it's highly recommended that you do them so you don't have to do them later. Um, so for those who are applying for the fall, all eight prerequisite courses have to be done by the end of the spring and then vice versa. So this is a very strict um, guideline. We don't really make any exceptions should you not meet those. So just make sure you finish everything before you apply. Um, like I said, plus and minuses don't count in your nursing GP calculations. And then um, you need a C minus or better for each, for every single one of the courses. All right, okay. So adjusted um, nursing GPAs. So this, your adjusted GPA is basically, it allows for candidates or applicants to admit two courses for their GPA. Um, this is for just to make sure that you can secure the 4.0. This would be your adjusted would be a 4.0 should you choose to omit classes. So they must include two science grades. So again, that's your AMPs, your chemistry or your microbiology. Um, however, the number of courses that you are allowed to admit is entirely dependent on how many courses you've fulfilled of your classes. For example, um, candidates with eight grades, so you just do just the specific eight um, prerequisites, you can't omit any grades. Um, candidates who fill out nine can omit one grade, and then candidates who do 10 to 12 can take out two. So in the end, you should have eight grades, should you, um, you have a minimum of eight grades. Um, so AP exam credits do count. They just count, they do um, count as your grade. Your score in your AP exams will translate to a grade. Um, and then, so if you take AP exam, if you take AP uh, courses, they will bump your number of courses completed to help you om omit courses. However, in progress courses are not considered omissions. Um, Sam, just wanted to check in. Are there any questions? I see some, but I don't want to. I've just been answering them directly. Okay, perfect. Then you're, you're chilling. Okay, so this is um, the breakdown of your GPA, your adjusted GPA. So um, however your GPA falls in this range, that will translate to how many points get to go to your final total score. Um, so like I said, 4.0, that's our, our um, average uh, applicant GPA, you get 40 points. So those of the those students who do get in the average is a 4.0 all right so moving on to the next component of our application process so that's going to be your t's test so you get a maximum of 30 points um you can take it about three times within a five-year period um you need a minimum of 75 percent to apply and it is required for all applicants um those of people who have taken the T's over five years ago can't take it again, but they will have three tries when they try again. So the the tries they've had in the past don't count into this three. Um, so for those of you who do plan on taking it or ta have taken it already, um, it's just a tip. There are no um, recommendations or no requirements as to how long you take in between your different T's tries, but ATI recommends at least a month. So you can look at what your weak points are and how you can focus on them for the next time. And then you can also sign up for the T's with the ATI website. All right, so um, another strict thing, um, Sac State is super strict on their ATI T's. Um, if your T's is not completed by the time you submit your application, doesn't matter if your application, your GPA is perfect. If your T is not in, we will not take your application. Um, so you have the option to take the T's here at Sac State. Um, those scores will automatically go to the School of Nursing. Um, you don't really need to do anything else besides that. If you do do it at another school or online, um, you do have to submit them to the school by March 1st for fall applications and then October 1st for spring applications. Um, for when you apply on the website, uh, after you take it, you can send it to either CA, uh, CA State Sacramento or CA State Sacramento T's. Um, both of those are acceptable and the School of Nursing will receive your T scores. All right. Okay, so at Sac State, we also hold um, testing, uh, we do, proctor the T's test here. So you are 
Um, if you don't want to have to pay to send your scores to Saxi, you can take them here as well. Um, you can, uh, I'm gonna send out this PowerPoint later, but you can just up, sign up to take the TEAS test on this website here. And if you have any other questions in terms of registering, you can email the, um, this C the CCE at ccenursing at csus.edu. Right. So this is the point breakdown of how the T's work. So um, the T, this is gonna be your T's percentage. So assume you get a 75, which is our minimum, you get one point. Um, so you're just gonna, um, so they're breaking down very small. It's like 1% uh, can be split between two points. So just make sure you calculate the exact point decimal to see how many points you get for your application. Um, I believe if I remember correctly, that our average score um, in terms of the T's is 22 points. So that's around a 91 to a 92% on the T's for our accepted applicants. All right, so going back to our in-progress policy. So one science and one non-science course can be in progress at the time of the application. So only one of each and you there's no exceptions. You can't have like two sciences and one uh, zero non-science, it's one or the other. So these are your, uh, the breakdowns of what's considered non-science and what's considered science. Um, sciences are A and P, one and two, chemistry and microbiology. Your non-sciences are your oral communication, written communication, critical thinking, and your statistics. Um, like again, I this is a I'm keep reiterating it because it's important. Make sure you finish all eight prerequisites by the end of the term you plan to apply for next. If that makes sense. So if you're applying for the fall then all your courses have to be done by the end of your spring term and then vice versa. Um, specifically for those applying for the fall, um, courses that are done during the summer won't count. So it has to be done by the spring, um, the spring term. All right, so again, <laughs> um, strongly encouraged to take it. You don't have to, but we strongly encourage it. Um, I'm just gonna t mention it again, um, nutrition, lifespan development, and also psychology have to be taken um, prior to your second semester. So you're gonna have to take it in a year anyway, once you get in, so you might as well do it now. Um, and then also your social cultural patterns course will be, um, must be completed prior to graduation. Um, and then it also for specifically for those who don't go to Sac State, but heard about this workshop, for those of you who go to quarter system schools, um, you can apply for um, with certain courses in progress but for example, um, if you apply for the fall, your winter and spring courses will, can be in, in progress that will count, but the application won't be counted or processed until those winter grades have come through. And then um, also the same thing, if you apply for the spring, your um, fall and summer classes can be in progress, but again, will not be processed until those last all those courses are finally submitted. Um, Okay, the repeat policy. So only three of your 12 prerequisite and co-requisite courses can be repeats. So of the 12, only three can be repeated. And then um, only one of those three can be a science courses. And these, I listed the science courses. I, I feel like I've been saying it a lot, but these are your science courses that you can repeat. Um, uh, if you... Um, if you do additionally, we will, we will just have to take your highest score of those um, of those repeats should you not get higher scores when you decide to repeat later on. Um, courses over seven years old on the first day of instruction are acceptable but are not included in the repeat count. But you will not receive the no repeat um, optional criteria, which we'll get into later. Um, so I mentioned earlier that repeats are based off of content, not course numbers. So should you decide to take courses somewhere else, um, any anatomy course, even if it's not called Bio 25 at another court, at another college, that will still count as an anatomy course. So make sure you just read and make sure what um, they're fulfilling the right um, content requirements for our prerequisites. Um, and then also withdrawals are not considered repeats, but um, I assume some of you will not be only applying to Sac State. Make sure you check with your individual programs because um, their policies might be different than ours. All right, so optional criteria. So these, these are different opportunities you can have to beef up your application. 
Um, so your health related work experience. So this is your opportunity for you to get um, volunteer experience and to get additional points. Um, what a lot of people do is that they like to volunteer in hospitals, um, get a license of some sort, um, but it has to be patient, uh, patient care oriented. So if you're not um, working with like indirect patient care, those won't count. Um, so make sure you make sure that your volunteering does fulfill those requirements. Um, so if you do 50 to 74, you get one point, 75 to 99 hours, you get two points, and then anything above 100, you get three points, which is your maximum number of points allotted. So your bilingual proficiency, those of you who speak different languages, you can um, make an appointment um, with a proctor here at Sac State or at um, another school. I know Sam here um, did not have a proctor for the language that she spoke, so she found another proctor to do it for her. Um, but basically, you take a little test. They just see, they just talk to you. The proctor will just see if you speak this language good enough to say that you speak another language. And um, after that, they'll sign a form and then you get three points um, for being able to speak another language. All right, so next one is first gen college students. If you're a first generation college student, you get four additional points. Um, I feel like that's pretty self explanatory. Um, environmental background. So this is for, I believe, if you go to a Sac State high school, you get four points. And then if you are a Sac State student, you get two points ad added to your application for just living in the area. Um, next one is if you have no courses omitted in general for your um, adjusted nursing GPA, you get two additional points for not um, omitting any courses. Um, and then also you get two points for not having to repeat any of the courses prerequisite or co-requisite for your GPAs. Um, all right. So tiebreakers. So like I mentioned, um, the Sac State Nursing Program takes, um, accepts students based on a rank system. So it's gonna go from 80 and then we're gonna go all the way down. We're gonna count 80 students and then we're gonna take those 80. So say we're down to tiebreakers of like, say it's like the cutoff is like 70 and say there's a few students that have 70. Um, this is how we're gonna, um, this is how we, how, this is how the School of Nursing is gonna determine who gets in and who doesn't or who gets that spot. Um, so we're first gonna go off of your non-adjusted nursing GPA. So that's assuming we're gonna take out your non-omitted. That's gonna be your raw nursing GPA score. So all your um, raw prerequisite um, grades, that's what we're gonna go off of. And so say you and someone else have the same exact um, non-adjusted GPA. From there, we're gonna go down to um, any repeats um, if you repeat any prerequisite or co-requisite course, and then down, we're going to go for, to your T-score. And then after that, those who have served in the military get priority. Um, okay. All right. So just to reiterate, so those of you who are applying um, in the fall, those who, who do not already go to Sac State, you have from October 1st to November 30th to apply for, you apply to the Sac State University first. And then once you, you can apply for the nursing program after. So for the fall, for app, um, university application, you have from October 1st to November 30th. And then for the nursing school application, you have February 1st to March 1st. And then um, for the spring, for the spring um, deadlines, you have uh, university applications open from August 1st to August 31st and then the nursing application from September 1st to October 1st. This, I hope that's, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little bit into it. So like I mentioned, you have to, if you don't already go to Sac State, um, you have to apply to the university first and then apply for the nursing program. But if you already go to Sac State, then you only have to worry about the, um, the School of Nursing application. So um, Sac State is a very competitive program. We get hundreds of applicants every semester. So therefore, um, these applications are very, very, very strict. We don't really make any exceptions. So make sure you guys keep track of your deadlines. Um, so we're, this is, we're just gonna talk about, um, uh, I feel like this is pretty much straightforward. Okay, so those Sac State students who have already graduated but want to go into nursing here, you have to apply into the university again and then 
still have to do the same deadlines and you have to apply for the university again because you don't technically go here anymore. Sac State students have had a lapse in enrollment will uh, may be have to do the same thing and reapply to the university and meet the same deadlines. Um, if you have any questions in terms of the admissions um, logistics for applying into Sac State as a university and also the School of Nursing, you can go to the admissions and outreach office in Lassen Hall, room 1102. And they also have a number here or an, um, an email that you can reach. Um, however, they wanted um, me to specify that if you email this email, make sure you include your first and last name and student ID number if you have one, um, just so that they know who um, they're talking to and who they can help. All right, okay, so this is a more in-depth version of the um, application deadlines um, that I gave. This is more of a specific breakdown. So. Um, in addition to my workshops, the uh, School of Nursing also holds group advising sessions. I highly recommend you guys go. They're super helpful. The people that are there are super helpful, super nice. They know what they're talking about. Um, so again, the, universe, the university applications, October 1st to November 30th or August 1st to 31st. And then you guys can read through that. Um, for these are like the different deadlines of when to complete your T's when the nursing applications do, when your T's are due, when your T's are due at a different location. So please keep in mind, if you do them at Sac State or not at, not at Sac State, the dates are a little bit different. Um, and then you guys should hear back from the School of Nursing for in either end of April for the fall and end of November for the spring. And then you guys will have your, and should you guys get in, you guys have your mentor um, student orientation the Wednesday before our first day of school. All right, so health requirements, um, we, um, we, the School of Nursing, we work in hospitals and we work with very sick people. So we are required to um, have our students have certain immunizations um, or uh, either you can do them at the well at the Student Health Center or by your own um, primary care physician. Um, I do also want to preface that uh, nursing students here at Sac State do get drug and alcohol tested right before beginning clinicals. Um, you do have to have some sort of health insurance, I believe. And then um, all these information where you need this in order to be clear to work in a hospital. Um, not only is it a requirement from the school, but also the agencies and hospitals we work at require us to um, it's called onboarding, but we have to submit all of our health documents. That's all of our immunizations, all of our like COVID vaccines, or if you aren't if you aren't vaccinated, you have like reason as to why you're not. Um, health insurance, background checks. Um, so basically, you have to get screened um, pretty extensively before you get in. So just wanted to preface that you guys will be screened should you guys get in. All right, so due to impaction, California residency is required to apply to our traditional pre-licensure BSM program. There is an exception for deferred action for childhood arri arrival, so your DACA and your AB 540 students. And then students with also a approved military fee waiver. Um, I'm not super well versed on the logistics, but should you have additional questions, I put um, a the office, the residency screening office, which is in Lassen, uh, room 1102, that phone number, and also the um, email that you guys can reach out to should you guys have any questions. Okay, so um, when you guys, I'm just going to kind of explain the different documents here um, that may or may not be helpful so you guys kind of know what to expect. So this document here on the left, that's going to be your application process. So this is going to be a detailed step-by-step -step as to what requirements or what is expected of you as an applicant by the School of Nursing in order for your application to be processed. Um, like I said, they're going to go through, oh, applying for the university and then also applying for the School of Nursing on its own. Um, on the right here, this is all of the prerequisite acquire, uh, requirements. They, It's basically a a uh, PDF document that talks about what I just what I've been talking about. Um, they talk about your application deadlines, residency, prerequisite, co-requisite courses, your T's test 
um, information, the breakdown of your science GPA, nursing GPA, and also your adjusted nursing GPA, um, in progress policy, repeat policy, and also your additional requirements. So it just it's basically gonna um, organize everything that I said into a nice little PDF. All right, so this traditional BSN application uh, checklist, this again is basically the same thing that to our previous document where it gives you everything that you should have before you apply. Um, this is really nice um, for me personally. I always felt like I was forgetting something. Um, and so they created this really nice little checklist for you to physically check off and see what you are or are not missing. Um, it's super helpful. You get to, they lay like the logistics of each requirement and how that works in terms of your application. All right, so this, um, the one with a bunch of rows, the sheet on my right, this is basically a um, application point calculator. So basically what you do is that you list in, you put in your grades, you input your grades as you get them, um, what class you took, what grade you got, and then how many units are in that course. And then it'll calculate, and you can also put um, your T's, um, what you got on your T's, any optional criteria, and it'll even let you calculate your score should you decide to omit different courses. So you can, it'll funnel it down, it'll give you what your application rank number is, which I think is super helpful because it can kind of give you a good idea of, um, like of where you stand in your eligibility and your competitiveness to get into the program. Um, Oh, did anyone have a question? I guess not. Um, all right. So this is your, so instead of the both applications, the nursing and your supplemental, this um, document on the left, um, you will find, you'll find this all on the um, Sac State Nursing website, by the way. Um, so this is just specifically for the supplemental nursing application. So this is only once you've gotten into the program or if you're already at Sac State and you're um, just applying into the nursing program. So it'll give you your deadline. So it's um, pretty straightforward. It'll tell you the courses that you need, the co-requisite courses, how um, your T's funnels in, how your GPA funnels in. So um, I think you guys should really utilize the plethora of resources that are available to you. Um, okay, on the right here, so this is a detailed breakdown of um, the optional criteria. So like I said, there's the health, health related work experience, your bilingual, first gen college student, environmental background, and then no omitted courses and no repeated courses. So again, they, um, like if you could see on the box, it says like, okay, number one, health related work experience, like one to three points, it'll give you like exact parameters as to what qualifies for what. Um, so they'll do that for every single one of the six um, optional criteria opportunities. So make sure you guys read into that and get every point you guys can. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so these are different forms that you'll fill out should you decide to do the different um, health, um, the different optional criteria. So on the left, we have our health related work experience form. So basically what you do is you fill out what term you're planning to apply for, name, ID number, and then you're gonna write the agency or where you get your volunteering or where you work um, to get these hours, name, address, and then also your like where it's located. And then um, the School of Nursing is gonna want you to basically describe what you do in a day-to-day -day in this specific job. Um, we do this because we specifically want human-client interaction. So if, so say you work in like a, doctor's office but you don't really talk to patients ever then that's up for debate as to whether or not that qualifies as your health related experience even though you are working in a doctor's office for example so um make sure you get your make sure you're working with patients and like interacting with them as well and then um at the bottom they just want you to um have your supervisor of some sort to um, basically corroborate that yes you did do these hours and yes you do work here and do these things all right so on the school the page on the right this is your bilingual proficiency so um this is a form that you give to your proctor whoever is testing you on your um who is testing you on your uh bilingualness 
And so you're going to give them, you're going to fill out that form, your name, date, ID, student ID, all that stuff, email, what you're applying. applying. And that's basically all that's um, all you have to do. After that, you email this um, form to your proctor um, and then they fill it out and then they'll email it back. They either email, email it back to you or they email it to Sac State. So that's just per the discretion of your proctor. Um, and then also um, certain languages, we don't offer them here at Sac State. Like for example, Sam, here, her language was not offered at Sac State, but you can try an email and ask. Email and ask. Um, if you want to have um, that you they don't offer your language and sometimes um, for Sam specifically she the person she emailed found her a proctor that speaks her language so the faculty for the school of nursing really do want to help you so if your language is not offered reach out and say like I am bilingual but there is no one here at Sac State that speaks the language that I do and they will find someone for you um, all right, so this is um, where you can like uh, schedule it. It's kind of hidden. It's not under our like uh, College of Health and Human Services. It's under the College of Arts and Letters. So um, this is just what it'll look like. So you wanna go to the Arts and Letters and then World Department of World Languages and Literatures. And then there's a specific tab that says it's the bilingual proficiency testing for the nursing program. Um, on there, it'll give you a rundown of what is expected of you in each of the tests. Um, it's on an intermediate slash elementary level. A lot of people are really nervous that they don't speak it language well enough. Um, mine was very easy. I basically just had a conversation about what I like to eat, um, where's my family from, basically just talking about myself. It was like a quick five, 10 minute conversation, and then I got my form signed. So it's not as scary as you think. Um, but they'll basically test you on your like uh, speaking proficiency, listening comprehension, and basically um, testing to see that you can speak what you're claiming that you can speak. Um, and then you can also retake it. Um, you can retake it, but um, um, you can't take it within two years, if that makes sense. So like in the bold, it says this test may not be re may be retaken no less than two academic years after it failed. Um, results. So if you should you not pass, you can take it again, assuming that you don't already get into another program, you can take, take it again in two years. All right, so let me see if our guest speakers are here. Let me see if not, I can. Okay, so and then okay. Uh, okay, so we're gonna meet our guest speakers. So these are our guest speakers. Um, so we're gonna have Dawson. These are a few of my classmates, Dawson, Edward or Eddie, and then Sam. So um, before they go, I can, I'll go first. So I went to Sac State for all four years of my college experience. I was here in fall 2019 and I did all my prereqs here um, minus a few of the co-requisite courses I took at my local community college. Um, I applied with 75 points and I got in on my first try. Um, I got, I took the T's twice. I got an 88, 89 on my first try. And then I took my T's again about two months later, about a month later. And then I got a 94 on my T's. Um, I did not omit any courses. I finished with the 4.0, so I got the 40 uh, GPA points. Um, uh, what else is there? Optional criteria, I did the um, health-related work experience. I also did the um, bilingual, um, but I did not qualify for first gen. I got two points for being a Sac State student. I believe that's... Oh, I also didn't um, omit or repeat any courses, so I got a decent amount of um uh of optional criteria and I'm pretty sure that's it yeah I've always wanted to do nursing so this was a very surefire path I only applied to Sac State which was honestly very gutsy on my part I probably shouldn't have done that if you guys apply for other schools I recommend applying for other schools like don't do what I did um but I think that should be it I think next up should be Dawson Cooper if he's here, I think he is here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. If you would yeah. be so kind of turn on your camera. 
Uh, if you want. If you want. I'm, a little, I'm a little hurt right now, so I'm going I'm to pass okay. on that. Okay. <laughs> You're good. Okay, yeah. So I'm a third semester nursing student. Um, I, I went to community college. So I went to ARC. I did all my prereqs there. I was not always nursing major. I switched around a lot. I was criminal justice and firefighting. Um, it wasn't really until like I talked to like a buddy of mine at work. So I also work as an EMT. So that's how I got uh, my health points, my health related work experience. Um, and he really convinced me to do nursing. There's a lot of different type of routes and options you could do with nursing, which makes it a great career. Um, let's see what else. I had a 96.7 on my T's. Um, I studied a lot for it. I studied literally three months and I used literally every single resource you could possibly choose like on YouTube and all that. So like Science with Susanna, then like there's a bunch. If you just YouTube it or even TikTok it now, there's so many good resources out there. I think it's super important to not only get a high T score, but like get A's. I think that's the most important thing. So I had mm -hmm. I had two B's and a C. So I was able to admit two of those grades and it brought me down to like a total of like 76 points. So I also had the environmental background, local, local community college. I'm a first gen college student and I had zero repeated courses. Um, and I applied to Sac State Delta, which is in Stockton and then ARC. I got into Delta's program, but um, that was an um, ADN program. So I decided to do the BSN and then I did not get into ARCs, which is lottery. Um, anything else, Caitlin? Um, uh, aside, you gave a few tips. Do you have like any tips for anyone that's applying your recommendations and stuff like that? If not, then I think you're pretty much good. I think just the T score, the T score and the grades, I think this is the most yeah. important. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people are nervous about the T's. Um, it's kind of just like, done like your SATs, but with science. Um, yeah. like Dawson said, um, like just your courses and your ear tees in general, like YouTube now has so many resources that you can use and you don't have to pay for it, which is even better. Um, so like watching videos and stuff like that, just like helping you. I feel like the, um, practice the tees, important too. yes, important, I very important. I'm a metrics book and I did like all the practice exams. Mm -hmm. I haven't got like apps on my phone. Mm -hmm. I, he did that and it helps you like with your critical thinking and like what to think yeah of. for sure I think like the one thing like it sounds really bad but there is no way for you to learn everything there is to learn for the t's there's so much and you don't know what they're going to test it on because you get everyone gets different versions and so I think the most important thing like Dawson said is practice problems if you keep doing them over and over you eventually um are able to like understand how certain types of questions should be answered if that makes sense if you do like enough like critical thinking questions you're like oh, okay like typically like the answers are usually this or oh like this math problem they're asking for this I've done enough problems that look like this that oh this is the procedure to do this if that makes sense um but yeah practice problems are your best bet they will also save you in nursing school because again you can't possibly learn everything so learning how to critically think is super important. So make sure you use your resources to learn how to critically think. But thank you, Dawson. I, I think even oh, like a Facebook group. I even joined a Facebook group. Like I was that serious about it. Like, I also, yeah. They <laughs> put study guides out there. They did so much. Like and I used mm -hmm. all the study guides. And, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think I joined the same Facebook group as you did. Um, I think Sam also did too. Um, we were all, I think it was like California, like pre-nursing students and nursing students. Or like uh, ATI is like version six. And then they everyone gives you tips and stuff like that, which is super helpful, especially those. Um, I remember I was applying. I saw a post from Sam. She was saying that, oh, like I got a like she got a, she'll talk about it later. But she got a fantastic score on her tees. And she talked about like, oh, these are what I use. These are my notes. And I would just download them. And I'm like, OK, if she got a score like that, then I want to get a score like that. So I'll study what I'll study off of what she studied so that was super helpful um and so yeah thank you Dawson all right um Edward is a, stuck in traffic at this moment but Sam if you want to go first uh, if you want to go next just talk yeah, about welcome. yeah hi my name is Sam so I'm a fourth semester nursing student I'm graduating this May I'm currently precepting on a trauma unit at UC Davis can you so explain what precepting means 
So precepting means that you're assigned to a nurse and it's a one-on-one -on -one experience. So for me, I'm doing 12 hour shifts and I have to do 18 by May. And I just finished my sixth one or my fifth one. So that has been fun. You get to do almost everything they get to do. You're still staying in your scope of practice as a nursing student, but you can pass meds, uh, do assessments and stuff like that. Um, so that has been super fun for me. I applied to Sac State with 79 points. Um, I took my T's twice. The first time I got like an 87.3. And then my second time I got a 96.3, I believe. Um, I also got points for volunteering. So I did 200 something hours at Dignity Health. Um, I volunteered in the emergency department and OR. So that was interesting because that allowed me to um, kind of see the different units of nursing. I personally liked OR better, but I also have an interest in ED. Um, yeah, so I think getting experience and being in a hospital prepared me. I didn't really work um, professionally in the healthcare before this, but um, just seeing what the nurses do, just being in that environment, um, I think helped me prepared for the program. I did omit, I think it was chemistry on my application. Um, so I applied with a 4.0. I didn't qualify for first gen, but I was a, a local high school student and bilingual. I did not do any repeats. And I think that was it for the optional criteria. You went to a Sac State high school. Oh, yeah. And uh, Sac State too, yeah. Yeah, so I went to high school in Elk Grove, which counted, and I think that's like four points. Mm -hmm. So that helped on my application. Uh, biggest advice on prereqs is to take your time. I know some people like to do their prereqs all in the same semester. <laughs> um, I don't really think that's the smartest option because you do want to get A's on this. And also your prereqs are pretty helpful in preparing you for the T's, I feel like, because you'll see like some repeated stuff. Um, so it's something that you definitely don't want to rush. Um. I would also say try looking at free resources. I did pay for some of mine, but free resources are definitely out there for people who don't want to spend a large amount of money, um, especially if you're applying to other schools. So YouTube was a really big one for me. I did buy like the practice bundle from the official ATI website, and it includes like a pretest and a post test. So the pretest is just to see which section is your weakest. So for me, I think it was like English or like science. So that helped me prioritize my study schedule. I like planned out my month uh, for the T's. So I didn't really touch on math because I think that was my strongest. And then it just helped me focus on the weak points, which helped me better my score the second time around when I actually took the exam. Um, Anything else you need from me, Caitlin? Um, I think, yeah, and I think she, yeah, I don't know how she jumped that much. Oh, my teeth, I didn't jump that much. But um, practice problems, I think that's a common yeah. thing that everyone's saying that practice problems are your best friend. Pre-nursing and nursing, um, this, should everyone get in, which I'm sure everyone is capable and very um, able to get in. Um, just memorization is not going to work anymore. Um, just this courses, especially when you get to your higher up um, ANPs, it's going to be very much um, being able to understand conceptual knowledge and being able to apply like, okay, so this is how everything works. This is the big picture. Like diseases happen when certain steps in this system have um are not working the way they should, like how does this affect the rest of your body? Because that's essentially what nursing is. We treat the issues of, like we treat diseases that um, affect the normal functioning of your body. And like knowing how the normal functioning doesn't work influences what interventions you do to help fix that problem, if that makes sense. Um, I Did you have any in progresses, Sam, when you applied? I think I only had micro in progress. So I okay. got my acceptance letter in the middle of micro. Okay. And for people who do get that, I think in order to keep your acceptance letter, you need to get, I think like a C. A C. Mm -hmm. 
uh, yeah. because you're already in the program. But yeah, I applied with one in progress. Yeah, I did the same thing. Um, Sam and I applied at the same time. So I would recommend if you were to take advantage of the in-progress policy, I would put microbiology as your in-progress. I Most people I know, I don't know if Dawson did that um, since he came in from a, another university. I don't know if he did that. But most people I know, did you um, do that, Dawson? Do what? Um, Sam and I did microbiology as our in-progress. Did you do that as well? Or did you finish everything when you came? I, had, I did all 12. Uh, okay just kidding not bro, everyone not i know <laughs> you're not everything done so okay yeah i did everything uh actually i did everything um but um microbiology and i didn't do nutrition so i did nutrition like last summer um but microbiology that is what i recommend um if anyone if you don't take anything from this presentation have microbiology be your in progress um a lot of people say it's the hardest course. Um, I personally did not like it very much. I still got a good grade, but it was just very difficult. And I like why put unnecessary stress on yourself when you know that you could just make sure you pass and then still get in. Because microbiology is um, a course that I know has taken a lot of people out of the running because it's some say it's difficult. So just have it as you're in progress. You can apply with your perfect GPA and then you don't even have to get an A in the class. As long as you don't fail it, then the, the grade goes in and you can still get into the nursing program. Um, I don't know if Edward is here yet, but if anyone has, we can answer any questions if you guys have any. You guys can ask questions about our application experience, like what the nursing program is like. I'm sure, I feel like the nursing program is very like a, uh, secretive program that really no one really knows about or like what we do behind closed doors so if anyone has any questions please feel free to ask um while we kill some time before our last guest speaker gets here um I can't see the chat Sam is there any uh, let's see you guys can also unmute to ask questions too you guys don't have to type it in the chat so um um I have a question yeah of course I just wanted to hear about your guys's experience like once you guys guys got accepted in like how was your guys' first semester in the nursing program <laughs> like what classes the whole experience okay so <laughs> Sam, Dawson you can also answer these questions too if you'd like um about your first semester of nursing school since we've all gotten through our first semester um Sam if you want to go first of how your first semester was like um, people in the nursing program say that your second semester is usually your hardest, but I think it's first semester just because it's so different from prereqs. Mm -hmm. Um, the studying is different. You're not used to being in the hospital yet. Um, just your classes are structured differently. You have skills lab and stuff like that. So it was really hard for me to adjust at first. Um, but I think as the, uh, program went on, I knew my weaknesses and I started doing more practice questions and eventually got higher test grades. So then up until now, I think it's been pretty easy. Um, it definitely gets better as you go through. Yeah, I agree. I think for my first semester, it, I feel, well, I feel like every semester is difficult in its own way, but not impossible. Like, don't get me wrong. It's, difficult it's going to be unlike anything you've done before um but not impossible um it I think the first semester like Sam said it's always split between the first and second semesters so how it's broken down is your first semester is your fundamentals so we're basically trying to cram the school's trying to cram everything you could possibly know like to be safe in a hospital into your brain in about 16 weeks um so you get to learn all of your skills. So like you get to learn how to take vital signs, how to give medications, how to give um, injections and all this stuff. And it's really fun. It's, you get to learn, it, you can start to feel like a professional. You get to do all these cool things. Um, but, oh, okay, Eddie's here, give me one quick second. Um, but um, you get to do learn all these cool skills. And, um, but I guess the one downside is that it's very packed. I, when I was in my first semester, I saw Sam, I saw Dawson more than I saw my family. And so you get to like bond with these people, like whoever, 
you get paired with because it's a group of 80 but you get split up into like little breakout groups if that makes sense and you spend all your time with them and it's honestly really fun you make really good friends um like those are those become your your ride or dies you see them all the time and stuff like that um your second semester is a little bit is a lot more relaxed in terms of how the semester runs it's a lot I feel like the first semester there's a lot of babying not babying but I feel like there's a lot of hand holding because you're learning how to do everything for the first time so you're at school from like eight to five o'clock because you're trying to learn how to like administer meds safely why they make it so hard because they, they want us to be safe we're handling people's lives and so they want us to be safe um and then it gets progressively easier in a sense that there's less um monitoring you, it's very self-paced um Dawson do you have any experiences with your first and second semester of nursing school? Yeah, so I came from like a medical background working as an EMT. So a lot of it was more like like a re review of information. So I, for me, this the semesters weren't like super hard. I would say it was challenging with the workload, um, especially first semester. I feel like we were going to like class like eight to five every day, it seemed like with labs, literally <laughs> from like eight to five with hour break in between. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that I want to say it was super hard for me, an aspect of like difficulty, but it's just the workload. Like that was the challenging part is just mm -hmm. having to come home and study. Yeah. I also um, mentioned that in first semester, there's something called front loading, which I think is the first three weeks. And that's typically like the most packed, like the most workload you're going to get. It slows down after a little bit, but it's week still four or five. Yeah. Yeah. It's still mm -hmm. stressful if you don't know how to manage your time correctly. But yeah, yeah front loading is a lot of work. Yeah, I think um, Sam said they do it for first semester. You have front loading every semester. Um, oh, yeah. You have it every semester. Um, it's basically they... Um, so like I said, first semester is your fundamentals. Your second semester is more like an... A, a, um, an additional degree of your fundamentals. So like in the first one, you work on your med medical surgical floor. So you're relatively stable patients. Second semester, you're working in like the ICU and stuff like that. So a little bit more um, medically dependent patients. Third semester, you get to do OB, which is like your labor and delivery, and then your pediatrics. And your fourth semester, what Sam's doing right now is you get to be placed in a unit of your choice. Um, but that also depends on like um, teachers' recommendations and stuff like that. But you get to be put on one specific unit and you work on that unit for the rest of the semester. Um, okay, since Eddie's here, do you want to talk about, uh, we're talking about, oh, what was first semester like for you? I mean, my first semester was a little rough. Mm -hmm. I started off, I bombed an exam. I didn't, just didn't know what to expect. Okay. So I just came into it and I'm like, I, I'm like I'll be fine didn't know what to expect but I kind of failed the first one but after that I don't think the material in the first semester is really hard like all of like Dawson said a lot of it is kind of review it's stuff that you already seen before even I think from like anatomy and physiology a lot of stuff mm -hmm. is like it's all pretty familiar to you it's just the workload is really hard you have to put in a lot of like a lot more hours than I thought I'd have to put into that mm -hmm. so but again not impossible not, just, <laughs> not impossible no it can be done definitely not a definitely not impossible I was still playing volleyball during the first semester yeah. so I still had time for myself even though like it was a pretty I think it was that like with classes wise I think so far that's been like the most time consuming semester for me so mm -hmm. I think that's um, the okay. only thing is just a lot of material but it's not hard all right and then Eddie since you're this is Eddie by the way another one of my classmates if you would like to introduce yourself and talk about your pre-nursing journey and how you are here where you are now yeah so my name is Eddie I'm a third semester nursing student uh I came to Sac State right after high school so I graduated in 2019 went straight to Sac State starting uh, started on my pre extra right away so I knew I was going into nursing right away so that's I just got straight to it uh, my prereqs was a little different than I think other people just because I did it during COVID. So halfway through my second semester, we went fully online and I did all my prereqs online after that, even all my labs, everything was done online. But I think one thing that really helped me with my prereqs was spreading out uh, like my workload, like not taking camp 
and then had a physiologist together. I spread out all my, like, I didn't take any, if a class was more than three units, I did not take any, any two of them together. So I didn't take like microbiome and anatomy physiology together. So I spread yeah, all of them out. So that. it took, it took, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> it took me five semesters to finish my prereqs, which I just did them the way that they scheduled it for me. It would have taken four semesters. So I just took that extra semester. But I think by doing that, I was able to get a perfect GPA. So without omitting any courses, uh, I had a 4.0 already. So I think by, by spreading it out and having that like a little bit extra like time, it's just like not as like such a heavy workload each semester, it helps you like be able to focus more on those classes and get a better grade in those. Yeah. So, and, and then another thing is since I finished, so when I finished my prereqs, well, what semester was that? We, I had to apply in the, in the fall, I spent all summer studying on my keys and I just took my keys at the end of summer. And I think that was another thing that helped just because I had the all summer just to focus on my keys. So every day I'll spend like a couple hours working on that and I didn't have to worry about any other classes. And that way I didn't do super, I got an 89 on my keys, which isn't like a crazy score, but just because I had a, I didn't really get on my classes, I was fine. Cool any tips that you have like that you haven't already said for like nurses or nursing students that are trying to apply into our program uh i think one thing is find people that are also trying to be like trying to apply to nursing uh, program in your class and just try to study with them that's what i did when i was online i sent like a group email to everybody in my class and made a big group chat i found out who was doing uh, also trying to apply to nursing school and I made like a group chat with just those people because those are the people that are also trying to get it in that class and they're mm -hmm. like they're also going to be focused so those are the people you want to study with and let, instead of just regular health science majors which just want to get a C and pass the class mm -hmm. so if you get a group of people to study with that are also trying to get a not just trying to pass the class I think that'll be pretty helpful yeah. uh and, and I think it's like if you already know that you're going to be applying to the nursing program, just like know that you need an A in the class. Or like look at rate my professor and make sure you have good professors. Don't just get whoever, like whoever you could get. Like make sure you have a good professor that is possible to get an A, not a professor that only gives an A to two students out of 80. Uh, mm -hmm. Do that. What else? That was a lot. I think that's it. That was, a lot. That was plenty. Um, Okay, yeah. So you've had, you guys have all had different perspectives. Um, Sam, if you want to look at the chat, I see there's a good number of them, but I can't. There's one from Mariella Torres. She said, if I take all my prereqs my freshman year, I could apply to the nursing program my sophomore year. Yes. Uh, yeah, because yeah. if you, there's no limit to how old you need to be to apply. Um we I've had classmates that were like 19 when they applied it doesn't really matter as long as you get your courses done then you can apply and as long as you get your t's done as well so your, if your courses and your t's are done then you can apply whenever you want yeah mm -hmm. uh, just a word of advice I don't recommend doing that though because especially for chem like you have your lecture then you have a discussion then you have a lab and then if you're taking another science with that, you also have another lecture and then another lab. And labs are usually anywhere from like two to three hours or something like mm -hmm. that. So your schedule gets very packed. It's very easy to get overwhelmed and stress. And then mm -hmm. you have to study for the T's, which is even more stressful. Um, yeah, just to ease the workload on yourself, I would say don't rush. But if that's something that is doable for you and that's something that you want to do, then I would say go for it. Yeah. I agree like if what I did was I did I got mine done in two years um I did not do it quite as quick as you did but props I <laughs> I don't think I can do that but what I did was um I, think that, I know a lot of people took a little bit longer a lot of people like Eddie took that extra semester to make sure that everything was lined up which I do recommend because these are very information heavy courses sometimes stacking them together can be a lot um what I did was I spaced it out that every single hard science course had a semester of its own for the most part, I think. And all the other stuff I took during winter break, I took during the summer, like at a, like at a community college or something like that. So that's like another way for you to 
help class those off. You can take about a community college during the break. Those are your, those aren't really classes that are as hard as your um, anatomy classes. So you can take them over the summer if you really wanted to and like get them done. But um, yeah, there is no need to rush. Um, you can take your time. There's really no, it'll still be there when you're done. Um, but yeah, you, but if you wanna, if you're done with everything by your freshman year, you can like you can do them your second year you can apply your second semester um next sam um somebody said can you guys talk about your health related experiences for the 100 hours um okay i can go first um so i know dawson did an emt so he worked as an emt for a while so that's how he got his hours i got mine because i was a um i worked in a dentist office so i helped do front desk, but I'm also a certified uh, dental assistant, dental hygienist. Basically, I helped the dentist in the back, like do your teeth cleaning and stuff like that. So that also helped with my health related experience. Um, Sam, you were you volunteered at Dignity, I believe. Yeah, I okay, volunteered yeah. in the emergency department in the operating room. Um, you can't really do much as a volunteer because you're not licensed. licensed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to stay in that scope of practice. Um, for me, it was basically just talking to the patients, supporting the nurses on the floor, like stocking the different equipments and materials that they needed um, just to see if they needed an extra hand. So that was it. And I did mine for like 275 hours, but you only need 100 to get the full points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you get more like 275, you still only get three. So that's, I, um, I think I came in with, I think I worked, I don't know how many hours I definitely worked. Like, I think it was during, I took, worked the entire summer, like six days a week, like nine to five. So I definitely accumulated more than a hundred. And so that's how I got my hours. Eddie, did you do the health related work experience or no? Yeah, I did mine during COVID. So nobody was actually like accepting volunteers. So mm -hmm. I volunteered at a funeral home. And I told them that I was providing therapeutic communications to the grieving family that was coming into the funeral home, and they accepted that. So as long as you, if you think you did something that might might work, you could email. Uh, I think it's Heidi that's in charge of admissions, mm -hmm. and explain to her what you did and if that'll work, and she might let it have a slide. So she let it, she yeah. let that slide for me because I couldn't find like nobody would accept volunteers. Yeah. Anyway. So that was the only yeah. place I could find. It's a little bit easier now because like everything's starting to open up again. But um, I learned uh, that for people who can't find volunteering, getting a license of some sort qualifies as your 100 hours. So should you decide to do, um, should you decide to do like um, CNA licensing, EMT licensing, like you can get your 100 hours that way. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of my friends were CNAs before they got accepted into the program and that helped them with their first semester because they were already familiar with the fundamentals of nursing and a few skills. So it does make it easier, but that's also like an extra step that you have to take because CNA courses can be like a couple months. I don't know how long. Like, um, yeah, a month. You like do have to pay yeah. money for them. So that's only if you're like super desperate. Um, same as anything else. I see like a good number of them. Can I open them? Okay. Um, somebody said, do you have to apply right after your 60 units are done or is it okay to apply like a semester after? Um, you can, I think you can, it's your 60 units in terms of classes. Yeah, you can apply afterward. Um, you can, a lot of people did what Eddie did where they extended their like prerequisite time frame by one semester. So you can, ex you don't have to do it right away. You can, you apply whenever you're ready to apply. Um, somebody said, I've completed all my prereqs. I believe that there is left to take as my exam, but I have a little testing anxiety. Is there any tips, advice, or words of encouragement? Um, for me, I have terrible testing anxiety. For me personally, um, I, for my tees, I took mine online. I went for a run before my tees just to like tire myself out just like a little bit so that I wasn't like super like jittery. Um, a lot of people like to wake up super early, get a good breakfast. Um, um, a lot of, I guess a lot of people, a lot of people do is, oh, like uh, 
Dawson, for example, for our nursing exams, at least, he stopped studying at four o'clock the day before an exam. And like, because if you go to bed thinking like, like, you know, studying right before you go to bed, like that's all you're like, you're not going to get good sleep. I think good sleep is really important. If you get really bad sleep, you're going to be like unfocused. You're going to be nervous. Yeah, so, be in bed by eight, go to bed by nine. That's my, that's my recommendation. Dawson sleeps very early. But he does well. So obviously it works. Um, but yeah, and so um, good sleep, good breakfast, and believe in yourself. Like I feel like you are your worst enemy most of the time. And you beat yourself up a lot. Like you think you're gonna do worse than you actually will. Like, like you will do well. If you believe that you will do well, then you will do well. And if you don't believe you won't do well, then you won't do well. The mind is a very powerful thing. So like you have if you put in the work you will do well um yeah that or just like sleep is really important if there's any questions I would say that. stay organized as well like for me kind of manic but I put it on a calendar so I scheduled myself out like a month ahead um so I was I knew what I was studying that day like this week because it's really easy to get overwhelmed like so there's English reading math mm -hmm. science, science. Mm -hmm. and you can't study all sections in one day or like one week so for me um knowing the what my weak points are I studied those way longer and then I looked at math probably like four days in my month mm -hmm. so just knowing like your week your weakest points and your strongest points will help you prioritize what you need to study. Yeah. Um, next question. Are you able to meet two sciences if you've taken all 12 prerequisites? Um, I need to look up, I think, let me make sure. Let me not make sure so I do not misinform. Um, this is the omit poll in progress. Yeah, Two sciences. On. I think it's one science. I think it's one. Uh, these are, no, these are in progresses. Omitting. Where is it? I literally oh. had it. No, 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 no. That's this way. Mm, there's the one where it's like, it has the, okay. So. Oh man. Uh, you have to include your so if you omit grades, assume you so you've done the 12, you can omit two grades, but there still has to be two science grades in there. So assuming you've done AMP one, two, chem and microbiology, you can omit AMP one, AMP two, I believe, and still leave micro and chem because it must include at least two science grades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if that is also so just make sure that at least two of the four sciences are still in your application but after you're done omitting everything then you're okay um yeah assume that you've done your 12 grades yeah um somebody said can you take chem in summer in a city college that's what i did that's so what i did I, I had chem through covid um i didn't do i got a b on it so i omitted that from my nursing application but I would say, yeah, like it's very doable to do it on the summer, especially if that's the only class you're taking. And chem, I think, is the most units in the prerequisite. I think it's five units. Mm -hmm. So the, it the has a, like a lab. There. Lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, I have not heard. Um, I feel like a lot of people struggled with chemistry here at Sac State. And so I didn't want to risk it. And so I took it at a community college. And then I just transfer my grades over. Um, yes. Yeah. So you can, yes. And you don't need to do intro chem. I know. Or I took chem 1A personally. I wanted to be applicable to different schools. And most schools um, in the area in California or that I wanted to apply to took general chemistry, which is chem 1A. So I had to bite the bullet and take chem 1A just in case I decided to apply to other schools. But if mm -hmm. Sac State is your only school, there are other schools that take Chem 6A, don't get me wrong, but um, you can just take Chem 6A and still be, uh, still qualify for Sac State. Yeah. Um, Somebody said, how many schools did you apply to in total and how many did you get accepted from? I applied, I applied to, <laughs> go ahead. I applied to, I think five or six. Oh, wait, you know, I applied to six. I got accepted from five, waitlisted, and one. And I think that was Long Beach. 
Um, so you do read up on their policies because in Long Beach, they don't do in progress classes. So like my micro, I was still in the middle of micro while I was applying. And for Long Beach, they take your in progress classes as a C on your application. So it's weighted very heavily. So I would say just finish that class before you even apply to that school. Um, and then also for other schools, I know they don't do the uh, plus or minus system that Sac State does. So an A minus is an A minus or like a B plus is a B plus. Um, Cause Sac State, if it's an A minus, then it's just a solid A. Yeah, um, I only applied to like, I only applied legitimately to one school and that was Sac State. Um, I applied to USF in San Francisco just for my own morale because they rejected me when I was a freshman. And so I just wanted to do it just to prove that I could get in again, I could get in this time, but I only had the intention of getting into Sac State. Um, Eddie, did you apply to any other schools or was Sac State your only school? No, I only applied to Sac State. Okay, yeah. Um, I think, and then Dawson mentioned that he applied to a few schools in the area as well. Um, anything else? Um, um, just to clarify, how many semesters is the nursing program? There's four. So there's I'm four. on my last one. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so yeah, so there's four and it's uh, basically two years. And it's like during the school year, you're not working during the summer or anything like that. Some schools do. Mm -hmm. Do you have to take your T's after your prerequisites or can you take it while in progress? I took my T's while I was taking bio 26. So I, I, took, my, I took my T's like a, a semester, like a year before I even applied, just because mm -hmm. I wanted to give myself enough time to retake it if I needed to. And I did better on my retake anyway. So I would say give yourself time to redo it over again, just in case mm -hmm. you didn't want the score the first time. Yeah, I did the same thing. I, okay, well, I took chem, I took chem 1A and bio 26 at the same time. And that semester was awful, but I also took the T's during that semester. Um, and yeah, I did the same thing as Sam where I did not, I, I did it early so that if I messed up, I would have time to do it um, because I'm not the best test taker. And so I wanted to give myself enough time, but I do know people that took their, their T's on March 1st and still clutched it and they did fine and they still got in. So that's just how well you know yourself and your testing abilities. So you can take it during or after or before if you really want. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. So you have to submit all 12 courses if you completed them all. You can't pick for just eight grades to be submitted. Yeah. So if you finish all 12, assuming that you're not omitting anything, like if you want to get those optional criteria, all 12 are going to go in. Um, you don't get to pick. We like the scores. It's more like if you did all 12, we're going to look at all 12. We're going to look at what's submitted, if that makes sense. So if you do all 12, you can't pick eight. Like if you finished all of the 12 courses, all the, tw all the grades of the 12 courses will go in and when they'll look at that. Um, but if you have course you don't want them to see, then you can do the, um, the omit. Um, you can omit two courses, up to two courses. And then um, you just lose out on the optional criteria. But personally, I think that's a, a necessary evil because I would rather omit two courses and, and complete with the 4.0 rather than take the um, take the like less than a 4.0 or like a three point whatever and then lose. You lose a lot more points in the GPA portion than your optional criteria portion. So if it's if it really comes down to it, omit the grades because you lose you're only losing two points. But if you let your GPA fall, then you lose a lot more points that way. Um, anything else? How long did you study for the T's? Um, my first try, I studied for like two months. Um, I am not a good long time studier. I, I can't study long time, like for like extended periods of time because I lose focus um, and I get sloppy. But that's just me personally. And then my second time, I gave myself a month and then um that's all the time that I allotted for myself and I did better my second time around um I think Sam kind of did the same thing yeah my first time with the T's I think like six weeks on and off I wasn't studying every day but I was studying like long periods of time in the days that I did study um but I think if you studied every day 
you could do it in a shorter yeah time. I did it every day in the four weeks I did it every day for like a few hours and then yeah so my first why. attempt was six weeks and then I think I had about two weeks in between my first attempt and my second attempt and I did better my second attempt um I also think just like going in and seeing the format of the test kind of helps because your first attempt like you're just so anxious and then <laughs> you don't end up getting the score that you want um yeah but I'm not saying don't don't waste your attempt prepare well for it don't waste your attempt prepare well but you know even if you don't do well the first time there you still have two other tries um how long did you study for your T's Dawson or Eddie whoever wants to answer first yeah I studied uh about three months I took it once (laughs) okay I I finished finished the spring semester and so literally my whole summer was studying like five days a week and then I took August see see, I did not I had to get into school I was not waiting another semester this is true um it varies yeah Dawson is a very long-term studier he is like what you should do he studies a little bit every day for like a month before our exams I study like a week before which is like not the best but you know followed by his example um Eddie how did how long did you study for your T's I probably studied for like a month but it wasn't mm-hmm. like consistent. It was like I'll study one day a lot, and then I wouldn't study for two days. And I'll study a little bit, like for the next three days in a row. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a month on and off. Mm-hmm. And there's probably a little more better ways to study because I didn't do as well as a lot of our, a lot of the other people that got accepted. But it's okay. Yeah. So it just really just depends on how you study best. I don't study well long term, but Dawson does, and so it just really depends on it on like per person. Definitely um, take breaks because burnout is real and yes I like that's why I didn't do as good my first time because I was burnt out from six weeks of studying mm-hmm. um yeah and I did better my second attempt when I only had two weeks in between so mm-hmm. I don't know just give yourself time to rest let your brain breathe yeah mm-hmm. next one for tease how does the process work do you schedule a day to take it yeah so um if I only did it online so I can only speak from my experience but I'm sure it functions the same way as in person um I went on to like the T's website and I picked a date um like I said I allowed four weeks so I picked a date four weeks in advance and then I just chose that date and so like yeah you just go and you schedule ahead of time but I mean some people took it day of they just went on they just like took it I don't recommend doing that because I feel like having a deadline allows you to prepare well and set like outlines for how you should study. I don't think aimlessly studying is a good idea because like you, there's no sense of urgency, but that's just me personally. Like I feel like, oh, just like studying whatever and then deciding you want to do it. Like, how do you know that you have everything you need to have studied? And so yeah, you just go and you you uh, pick a, you schedule a test date and then you, you know, set your calendar and you just study, study, study until you feel you're ready, until that date comes and you take your test. Did you need to do a dry run with the proctor? I'm taking mine tomorrow. Oh, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> um, for the um, ATI, the online version. Yeah, like it, it's like really short. I would recommend if you're taking it tomorrow, I would do that today. Um, just to save yourself some anxiety should there be any technological issues basically like it's gonna have you log in just make sure that your computer your computer works like your room is like clear and just like all the logistics uh, uh, that goes into a proctored exam um but yeah like I did but um would recommend doing that today or like really real a few er hours earlier before your test exam like don't do it where it's like right before and then like it doesn't work and then your exam doesn't start on time and then your score doesn't count it's it's a mess so just make sure you give ample time for things to go wrong assume things will go wrong and plan for things to go wrong um have a good wi-fi network yes (laughs) yeah (laughs) um let's see will we be able to get the slideshow and recording Yes, um, I'm not sure where it will be posted, um, but the park will be posting it. I think it's on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, also, I just wanted to say it's 630. So those of you that can that need to leave can leave. If you guys have any questions that were not answered, you guys can email me. It's on the screen. So just yeah, but we'll keep answering questions until there's no more questions left. So yeah, anyway, Sam, continue. Sorry. 
um oh this is the same one where can we find this presentation slide okay. <laughs> um any other questions that i can answer yeah you guys can unmute you guys don't have to do it in the chat if you guys have any questions i think that'd be a little bit easier so you guys just unmute and just ask me questions i think i saw someone had a question um, what is the average age of a person getting accepted into this program uh, we have a good mix of people um me sam and eddie are around ooh, 21 20 something yeah something like that um but we do have like parents that have like full-blown children that are like like i i have someone in my group that has like four kids his oldest kid is like 12 mm -hmm. so it there's a good mix because i mean you can apply, there's also you know, like uh second bachelor's applicants mm -hmm. so they've already completed the first one and they're coming back for nursing um what do labs look like each semester um labs are dependent on what you're learning that semester so first semester it was more like okay learning how to take blood pressure how to listen what is like learning how to use your stethoscope um learning how to like do like an exam on a patient um second semester um like oh learning how to do like iv pumps um like and then we get to do like simulations where we basically have like simulated real life experiences like oh the second semester we had one where like oh yeah your patient like stops breathing what do you do like oh your patient's heart stops you gotta start doing cpr and so it's like stuff like that it just helps us make sure that our skills are um we're well equipped for the units we're gonna be working on i think third semester we've delivered a few mannequin babies we've learned how to swaddle a baby put on diapers stuff like that um we've learned how to um the way diap way babies way diapers how to hold babies how to deliver babies and then fourth semester you get to learn how to do like the the cool stuff you can do ivs and stuff like that so it it's just pertaining to what you're learning that semester um is the t's exam online or in person it's both it's both it yeah. just depends i we took ours while we were during covid so we had to do online but i think they offer in person now so you yeah, can do either so. mm -hmm. Uh, do you think it's realistic to have a part-time job while in the nursing program? Um, I, I don't think they, so, but I, it can be I done. Do it. Yeah, it can be done. Um, I think they recommend you don't work more than 10 hours a week. I'm pretty sure. I think that's what the, what number they said. Um, don't do full time. Um, and so I, I work because I work for the park, but also my job is very minimally demanding i get to teach people about stuff that i already know um dawson was an emt for a little while um but i we do have classmates that do work and you know if you need to work it they, they, they never say don't work like it can be done it just make sure that your grades come first and make sure that you are able to time manage well and stuff because pre-nursing is demanding yes but nursing school is a lot more demanding so you have to be able to manage your time well but we're not saying that you shouldn't work you definitely can it's everything is possible yeah how long and how often are your shifts in the program okay so first semester you work one um, day a week so it's either tuesday or wednesday depending on what group you get put in and you work for eight hours eight hours yeah from like six to two or three, something like that. Um, second semester, you work two times a week um, from from six to four or something like that. And you work the eight hours. Um, third semester is where you start doing the 12 hour shifts. We, um, I work from 6.30 to 6.30 on Tuesdays. And then um, Sam works like three 12s every week, depending, it depends on her nurse, but you work yeah. um you can work up to three so it just depends on whoever you get paired with so her schedule is a lot different than like anyone else in her group yeah. um any other questions people are was first semester easier than microbio i mean i hated microbio so i want to say yes i despise microbio so i think first semester is more like anatomy which i really like 
So I enjoyed first semester in terms of what we were learning because we were learning about like anatomy and stuff like that. There isn't that much about microbiology. It's just more like learning about different bacteria and just like recognizing the names and stuff like that and how, what you should do care-wise should a patient have certain bacterial infections. Yeah. Um, I think first semester was harder for me because of how the exams were formatted. So the questions aren't like fact-based or NCLEX questions so you'll get like charts or you'll get like a paragraph of a scenario and then you answer it based on that rather than asking just one fact and like moving on because that's how prereqs usually are but it's not like that mm -hmm. yeah um yeah nursing exams are structured as all the answers are correct but you have to choose the one that's most correct in that given situation um yeah it's something to get used to is there anything else there? What type of nurses do you want to be? That was a direct question. Um, <laughs> I wanted to go into OR, um, but I'm open to other units. Right now I'm on trauma and that has been pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely OR. I would like to get a job at pediatric surgery in UC Davis. Um, I'm really interested. I'm like kind of all over the place. Um, I have a focus on pediatrics and labor and delivery. I love kids. I have a child development minor, so I want to work with kids, but I also really, really liked the emergency room. So pediatric ER may be a unit in my future. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. What yeah. So labor and delivery, peds or the ER. And uh, Eddie, do you have any, what unit you want to work on? Yeah, for me, it was probably ER, but mm -hmm. I'm doing PEDS right now, and I like that too, so I guess we'll kind of see where I get my preceptorship. I'm pretty open to uh, either one of those, and mm -hmm. ICU is pretty cool too, so maybe that too. Mm -hmm. Just kind of see where I get placed for that. Okay, cool. Dawson? Yeah, I'm kind of bouncing around, but I'm leaning towards ICU. Yeah, ICU is very popular. ICU, PEDS, and L&D are very, very popular. Um, a lot of people like to do those. Um, I think this is the last question on the chat. Oh, Who, okay. What professor do you recommend for Anatomy 1? I had so Bio 25, I'm assuming that's Anatomy 1, Kai right? Eater. I had Kai Eater. I loved his class, personally. Sam and I had it together, and I think he's a very good teacher. I don't know if Eddie can corroborate if he wants to recommend someone else. Oh, yeah. Who? Kai Edwards the goat. Okay, yeah. So Kai, we ha all had him. That's the best professor. That's the best professor I've had through all my prereqs. I he agree. gave me extra credit for being on. He gave me extra credit for being on Zoom while in my bed. Oh, okay. So well, we don't have. You could convince him to give you. You could convince him to give you extra credit for anything. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I recommend Kai Eater, but again, all of the professors are good in their own way. But it's more like Professor Eater. Uh, taught best in the way that I learned and even then just because a professor is not good doesn't mean that you are destined to get a bad grade you can supplement with outside resources should your professor not be teaching in the way that you want or not in the way that you learn best there are other resources that you can use to supplement it um, I think that's it if no one has any other questions then that's all thank you guys for coming um my email is attached you guys have any other questions um if you have any questions for them you guys can ask if you guys want their emails you can if you want you guys just ask me for it yeah thank you guys for coming and have a good rest of your day